And so I was talking to Nathan this morning, and I said, uh, how was your week? You know, we reminisce. Where were you when the snows came, you know? What were you doing? And uh, I said, I don't know if I should ever preach on patience again. And so whatever I preach on, I get tested. And patience was one of those things for me this week. Yeah. Now, if you didn't hear that on the air, my wife said hardly, amen. And so I stayed home Monday and Tuesday. Hmm. Didn't do so well with that, I guess. Enough said. The Lord knows. And I, I, I even talked about how hard it is sometimes to wait. We, we read from Scripture, though, uh, though it tarry, you know, Habakkuk talked to one of the Old Testament, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, though the vision tarries, wait for it. Talking about old stuff, that's an old promise. The appointment, there's an appointed, it's appointed. We have God moments, God's timing. And so, well, it's okay, God, whatever you want. And so, all, it always keeps going back to, okay, Lord, you're in control. You're in control. Okay, Lord, you're in control. Yes, you're in control. Oh, okay, I get it. But we're all human. Right. As soon as you get through one problem, where's Chet? Oh, he's in the back. Chet goes, you got to make a point in your message, pastor's trucks. I know what he was talking about. He likes to have fun with that. Well, how many trucks do you have? Well, it's one, two, three, four, I think. You can't drive them all at the same time, but if one breaks down, you get another one. To, you know, wait, patience. Anything that's moving will break down in time. How about our bodies? Right? But I have found, even when I have pain, if I work through it to a degree, pain is for a reason, right? So you won't overdo it, I, I guess, right? I guess. But I feel better after I work or move than if I have had just sat, totally sat. I, and, uh, I know that's good to wait on the Lord. That's nothing, that's not wasted time, it's beneficial. But how are we to spend our days as the closer we get to the end of our life? Right. How should we spend our time? What is valuable? What is most important? We ask those questions. What gives us value? What gives us worth? What makes us feel like we've accomplished something at the end of the day? And for someone who's a, well, my wife says I'm a workaholic. And if you don't get something accomplished, you wasted the day. That's the workaholic. All right, we'll move on. We're moving on. We're learning, right? We're learning. Paul understood some things about God's timing. He would write in his letters, if the Lord permits, right? If the Lord permits. My wife said I'm supposed to do this with my hair. Yeah. 
He's really mess. She's really messing. The Lord is with you. Do you believe that? How do we know that? Try to live one day without him. It's a miserable place to be. You get so many people who don't have the Lord. And so I've chosen Psalm 90. Because it really sums up our life here. And what we have to look forward to in the life to come. But until we get... Don't get to my first point. I'm still in introduction. <laughs> introduction. God is the creator. For, I'm going to call this a heart of wisdom. A heart, we need... How many want a heart of wisdom? Yes? Good. We need to have wisdom in how to live in these days as inflation comes more and more. We need to know how to go about doing business. Verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains, this is still introduction, before the mountains were born, thou didst give birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. This is really hard to wrap your mind on, that God existed before creation. How, how do we measure time? Without beginning, without beginning. He's always been unbelievable for us to understand. It was there before the world was created. Hebrews 1 and verse 1 through 3 chime in, chimes together. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions, in many ways. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how God used Old Testament characters and use their personalities to write his work. We should learn from that because every one of us are, have a different personality to a degree. We're all different, but it's a good thing. So after he spoke to us in the, in the last days, back to Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. In the last days, he's spoken to us in his Son, whom he has appointed him of all things, through whom also he made the world. He made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory. This is talking about Jesus. He is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power, okay, let's just think about that. God upholds all this stuff in the universe by the word as he spoke it into existence. He spoke it into existence and it obeyed. And when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand. Jesus sat down. Well, he's just, is that what Jesus is doing, just sitting there? Well, let's just understand. The, the verse that is representing, his, it's a position that Christ is at the right hand of the Father. He has the position of honor. Oh, no doubt he, he sits there from, for some time. But Jesus said, I will go to prepare a place for you. So he's busy making a place in heaven. At the same time, 
He said, I will build my church. Because God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triunity, is here living in you and I, as we call upon him. Does that make sense? God in heaven is God also in you through the Holy Spirit. So you are never alone when you have Jesus. You're not left as orphans. But until then, but verse 3 back in Psalm 90 reminds us we're not going to live forever. Thou dost turn man back into dust. From the dust we were created. And verse 4, a thousand years in thy sight all are like yesterday when it passes by or as a watch in the night. I don't know who come up with this statement, this too shall pass. I don't know where that, you know, exactly. Uh, but that's become quite popular. It's even in song. This too shall pass. What it means is that we've been through trials. We've been through things before. Uh, we've seen things before. Uh, this too will pass. We, we probably said that when COVID hit us. This too shall pass. It's passing, but it still hasn't totally passed. When it will pass, if it will pass, it probably will never be the same. The world has changed. Well, what do we have to hang on to then? We have the Lord, who has never changed. Same yesterday, today, and forever. So what we need in this world is wisdom, how to live. So in point one, you had it up for a moment. Point one is life here is short. Life is short. Now how do we know that? Well, you read the papers. You read the obituaries. You go, wow. They were young. Right? Wow. Wow. People dying in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And then some go into their 80s, 90s. What does the scripture say? We'll read on. It says, Thou hast swept them, verse 5, Thou hast swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. Notice the phrase, fall asleep. Right? Because in Paul's letter to Thessalonians, he refers to people who die in Christ are asleep. That means they'll be awakened someday. It's a resurrection. And so he, he likens them as the morning you have the dew and you have the grass. It's, it's sprouting anew. It flourishes. It sprouts, verse 6, toward evening in the hot sun. It fades. That's how life is pictured here as being short. It withers away. We have been consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath we have been dismayed. Now this is probably referring to the discipline of the Lord. He's, he's seen things happen to God's people because they have disobeyed and God has a way of bringing people back to him through hard times, through discipline. Thou hast placed our iniquities before thee. Thou hast, there is no secret sin in God. God knows everything. He says our secret sins in the, their secrets, their secret sin to, to other people, but there's no secret in God. All our days decline in thy fury. We have finished our years like a sight. He's, he's kind of looking on the, on the, and the, on the human side, the failing side of humanity. And then he says, as for the days of our life, they contain 70 years. Interesting. Well, if you're strong, 80. Uh, 
Well, what about those folks that get into their 90s? You see, after 70, every year is a bonus. Okay? Okay? But dad used to say, I'm living on borrowed time. Well, you know, what he's saying is, I, I don't know, you know, he knows the day will come, but he was blessed by God to live. Well, there are a verse or two that talks about if you want to live a long life, number one, obey your parents. That, that's a promise. And I think the, the other one would, would go on how, how we live our life. And it leads me to the point two. Life is short, verse point one. Second point, live well. Live well. In other words, Take care of this temple the best you can and guard your heart. I'm talking about attitude. I'm talking about mindset when it comes to how I view others. Do I let anger build up within me? Do I let bitterness, do I let stress begin to Buckle me, rather than, Lord, I need you. Lord, by your, by your grace, by, by your help, we'll do this and that. James said we're like a vapor that's in the morning and we disappear. That's like life. He says if we're going to engage in a business, we'll say, rather than we're just going to start out, we're just going to do it, we ask the Lord to bless Will you bless me? I forget where it is exactly. This is your assignment to find this. The Jabez prayer. How many have ever heard of the Jabez? It's somewhere in the Old Testament. That's clue one. But he prays sort of like this. Lord, bless me. And Lord, my tent. What does he say? He's saying, I want your blessing, Lord. I want your blessing in, your, in, in my family, and I want your blessing in my business. Because he was sincere in his heart. God, because God saw his sincerity, God literally blessed him. And there was a book that came out uh, several years ago. Finally, people were picking this thing up, and finally one of them said, Lord, no more blessing. I have too much. Well, that's a pretty good problem, right? But to live well, verse 12, we need something to live well. And here it is, verse 12. Teach us to number our days. Oh, boy, it gets scary when we start taking years and reducing them to days, and we start figuring how many days we got probably left. Days. That we may present, here is the key, that we may present to thee a heart of wisdom. If I had known, if I would have known when I was younger, if I would have known back then, this is what, the way we talk. If I would have known back then what it would have been like now, then I would have done this. If I would have known that the thing was going to, you know, land was going to go crazy high, you know. But the problem was we didn't have the money anyway to invest. Yeah. It's more than about money. It's about our conduct. It's about our character. Integrity. It's about living out our life where we touch someone else to humility. Or we've given to the poor. Or we've left a little in our fields, as it was instructed in Old Testament, when you glean, don't glean every corner. That was the welfare system of the day. Don't be greedy. Take and leave. And then there'll be those who have nothing will come. And that's the whole story of Ruth. She made her way to a foreign place. 
See, the children of Israel have been up and down with the Lord through the years. As you read the history, they did well when they served the Lord. and God blessed them. I've got to do this for him. God blessed them. But as sure as soon as they got their eyes on other kings and other lands and how they did it, they wanted that. And their hearts got in a wrong position. And they began to conduct themselves with greediness. And they began to forget about God. And God begins to allow allow them to go into uh, slavery. Allow them to go into oppression. And then they would look up again and God would be merciful. And he'd bring them out again. And then he'd help them for some more years. And so on with the cycle. Ups and downs. But teach us to number our days. What what does this mean? We we are only going to live for so many days. But every day counts. Every day is a gift. Every day we get to live here is a gift from God. Because we never know when he's going to give us the opportunity to somehow become a help rather than a hindrance, and that we will bless someone else that is in need, or that we can strengthen our brother or sister. Here's Colossians 4, 5 and 6, that teaches us how we are to live, conduct yourself, conduct, conduct, action, behavior, mannerism, Conduct yourself with wisdom. He's referring wisdom. We need wisdom without, well, outsiders. There's, those are people yet to understand who they need Jesus. We, we don't condemn them. We are reaching out. Our whole reason, part of our reason we, God saved us is so that you and I can give the message, present the message to a fallen world. Every day has potential. You have potential through the Lord to touch someone else that is struggling to make sense out of this life. So we are making most of the opportunity. You you do know that we may the church may be having the most most opportunity of us ever ever had because people are asking questions. People are wondering what in the world is going on, and we're supposed to know. We don't exactly know everything. But we know enough that God is going to come back. And God will fight for his nation, Israel. And God's hand is on his people. So he says, Colossians says this as we read on, verse four, chapter 4, 5, and 6. Let your speech, how are people going to know unless they're, they're, Romans says, how are they going to know unless there's a preacher? How are they going to know unless someone's, brings the good news. That's why we have missionaries. That's why we support them. You may not be called to go to Ukraine like Phil Phil and Denise were. But here's where their words were. were, They they said, we're going to stay. They needed a positive just to break. They said, we're going to stay. God bless them. Thank God that they're getting to a safe place. I admire their heart. We never know what's going to happen in our land. We're not exempt. We have to believe God. This, this, this world without Jesus is going to be chaos. The more and more we get, the world's not getting better. The church and Jesus Christ is getting better. The church needs to get better and will get better because of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? As we seek him, you will find him. Making most, I'm still in Colossians 4, 5, making most of the opportunity. 
That's, a, that's one word of wisdom right there. You have, we may have to adjust how we're going to live somehow to make both ends meet. Or, uh, you know, you're feeling it right now. Every time you go to the gas pump, you're just beginning, and we go to the grocery store. Well, unbelievable. And they tell us that this is just the beginning. And so we might have to adjust some things somehow. We need wisdom. And so and, and it just began to say, you know what? God is my provider. All right, just settle it right now. God is your provider. That's right. And it goes on, let your speech be with seasoned with grace. Seasoned with grace. With salt. Soul is something Jesus referred to who his people were in the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. We should preserve. When you go into a workplace and you sometimes, or you go into another place or you go into a a home, or you go where there you feel a pressure. You go into a school, you feel a battle. You feel kid. You feel something going on, and young people. You feel this battle. You bring you bring the presence with you just by being there. And they maybe say, "Well," they may back away from you, or they may be kind of wanting you to know what you have. God wants to use you and I. I don't know the full story. Maybe Linda knows the story. My dad, when he was kind of had to go to the doctor once or twice, Rick, you know, in the end time, in his life. I heard this story that he had actually uh, was in the doctor's office and, and he told his he told his testimony to another person that was waiting. Maybe you never heard that. That's news to you. Well, that sounds like dad, doesn't it? A quiet man, but you get him alone with uh, a person, and he just begins to liven up. And because mom wasn't there to answer the questions. I can say that in love. That's just kind of a side note. We need to be free. We can be free to be ourselves in the day that we live right now. You don't have to be afraid. Bless God. God doesn't put fear on us. That's not his job. That's Satan's job. God is pushes away the fear factor. And so it leads me to the third point. Besides life is short, Besides living well, we get to live and we want to live in God's favor. God's favor. I mentioned something about that maybe last week. God doesn't play favorites. That's not what he's talking about. He says in the word here we have uh, verse 16, let Thy work appear to thy servants, thy majesty to their children, and let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and do confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. I was on a job several, I was a couple years back. Uh, I had a had a basement put up. I was getting ready to pour the floor, and. The, the day I was getting the, the dirt leveled and so forth, here was a plumber. I thought the plumbing was done. Well, he said, this, this piece is not in the right place. And so this plumber was trying to feed this line. It was a le- quite, quite a distance, like 20 feet. He's trying to shove this copper line through uh, kind of a small pipe. And they were working at it, and they were working at it. And the good thing was I didn't hear any cussing. 
I didn't hear any swearing and slang. And he got down, and I said, How, you got it, you got it. Yes, he said, Psalm 90, verse 17. Confirm the work of our hands. That the favor, that's the favor of God. That's God helping you. Shows up when you need, when you when you when you hit bottom. Amen. The favor, I want the favor. We can't do life very well without God. It don't go so well. It's hard enough living in faith, but living without faith, I can't even imagine. So the wonderful verse to claim, if you have a business, if you're self-employed, claim it over your business. If you're working somewhere, claim it over the place where you go to work. Confirm, war, bless. If you have a project, how many have projects, hobbies, you do something, whatever you do, confirm, Lord, bless the work of our hands. Did you know that God created us to work. That's a good one for a workaholic. We like that one. Oh boy, says the work. Do your work heartily as unto the Lord, Colossians. Do it as unto God. He placed them in the garden to cultivate. Well, that was after the fall because the weeds started coming, right? There wasn't any weeds before the fall. Perfect. Did you know that we're going to work with God in eternity? That he is a work. I can't imagine life without something to do. Come on. You, you, know, you know what you like to do. It just so happens, that's just not all about you. That's God who built you. Do you think for a moment that this is just happened that you enjoy nature or whatever you might enjoy? You want to take pleasure? Enjoy helping you. It wants to bless you because he sees our weaknesses and he sees that we might get discouraged and want to give up or lay it aside or lose interest to say, what's the use? We need wisdom. How to spend our time, how to live. We know that life is short. And we need God's help. And so the early church obeyed and waited for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, immersed them and empowered them. And then they went out preaching and signs and wonders followed the proclamation of the Spirit. Healings, extraordinary miracles. Jesus was building his church then and he is now. And there are many healings that are taking place in the body of Christ even today. Let's, let's believe for salvation. And I was thinking, Lord, save entire households. Let's just not, uh, it's just not about you and I. It's about our children and their children and their children. What would bless you more than anything else, probably as you get closer to your end of your life, is to see that your children and their children are looking to the Lord. Right? Am I right? When you know the Lord, you want your family first. And then you go from there. How's that going to happen? Never underestimate the power of a praying grandma, a praying grandfather. God hears your cry. They don't stand a chance. Hell lost another one. They sing that song over in the Southeastern University. You know, we listen to the where Annie is, and hell lost another one, you know, it's like, I am free, I am free. They're free. 
Ah. Oh. I don't know if I should read any more, but you know, who do you know is the wisest man that was on the earth besides God? <laughs> Solomon. What in the world was he thinking? We know that he was, here's what he, he praised this God. First, or Second Chronicles, verse 10, give me wisdom and knowledge. He was in a good position. He had it going for him. That I may go out and come in before this people, for who can rule this great people of who can, you know, who can. He understood the seriousness. And somewhere along the line, his heart got off track. You, you read? No, I won't say it. I won't say it. I will say it. The wise, the concubines, because as he grew richer and richer, other kings would give him women. Kind of like a, a bonus or something. And it says his wives turned his heart away from God. It's a lesson to me, anything or any of us, anything, anyone can turn our heart, anything that turns our heart away from God is an idol. Right? And so a part of the wisdom that and he still had wisdom, but he, he neglected. He forgot. He put it on the shelf. Now we know that he had so much wisdom as he wrote so much Ecclesiastics, there's so much Proverbs, and so many riddles, and so I forget how many. But he sums up life in his last verse or two in the book of Ecclesiastes. Right? He summed it all up. Love God, keep his commandments. Right? Is that what he basically said? You're going to stand before him. So I was praying here this morning, and it came to me. The kings, kings who lead countries and lands, and serious, serious consequences. That they lead people astray. Serious consequences. Because they will stand before God and give an account. So it is if, if someone hurts a child, hurts a, as Jesus said, it was better if they weren't born. We have a broken world. You know that. We have a broken down culture. And you and I are living right now. And we're to be engaged and in tune. What is God speaking to you lately? And I encourage you to ask the Lord's favor. Someday we're going to get to the real meaning of Vernon got some insight about the blessing. And one of these days, one of these Sundays, I'm going to have him explain it. Because I know we sang this song last Sunday, but I can't help but sing it again because it's re-read about the favor of God and this blessing song that came along. It just seems to sum it up so well. The Lord bless you and keep you. And then it talks about his favor be upon you. If there's anything we need right now, and our Christian brothers and sisters in, in Russia and Ukraine, is they need the hand of God to intervene. And however that happens, 
however that's played out, whatever's in your heart today, may the Lord be near you. As we sing this song, I'll make it a prayer. Make it a prayer in your own heart and your own life and in your own family and your loved ones.